Hey, Grant, thanks so much for being on the podcast today. Good to have you. Yeah, great to be here. And thank you for the invite. Awesome. Uh, all righty. Before we get into the accounting stuff, um, I'd just love to sort of hear what you get up to when you're not working. Uh, I like to keep fit, do a bit of gardening, um, do a bit of running. So it's, it's keeping fit is important as well as, you know, spending your time away from computers and stuff like that <laughs> in the garden. So that's probably my pleasures. Yeah, awesome. And and what's, what sort of gardens do you have? Are they veggie gardens or...? Um... No, mainly just acreage. So, you yeah. know, keeping um, the garden nice, the lawn mowed and, <laughs> and and picking up a whole lot of leaves. So that keeps me busy and healthy, yep. which is a good thing. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, we're coming into summer. It'll be on the mower at least once a week, yeah? <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. the hassle, right? Yep. But um, that's, you know, it gives you a break from um, doing work and thinking about business. And, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, no, awesome. I find, um, yeah, I find that that is actually a bit of a um, an outlet for me is jumping on the ride on and yeah. going around for an hour. It's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's good to clear the head. <laughs> and we need to do that. We've got to get that balance right. So, mm. particularly the last couple of years, as we know, it's been really tough for a lot of people. Mm, yep, uh, absolutely. Well, um, okay. Well, would you be able to sort of um, you know, tell, tell me about your background in accounting because you're a CA um, and you also offer a, a solution to other accounting firms. So, yeah, walk us through your your career. Yeah, you know, I started um, in a, a regional city uh, working in um, business advisory services and I had a client um, that owned a, a series of IGA stalls mm. and he said, we don't have the capacity to compete with Coles and Willys, could you help me get some finance? So um, we did a benchmarking project on the independent grocery sector and we were able to get um, one of the major banks in Australia to lend about $200 million. So that caught my interest in doing more advisory work. And mm -hmm. I started to um, go into different industry sectors and we saw an opportunity to develop a business valuation tool based off the way banks look at credit risk. Okay, and, and that's how B Starter started back in two thousand one. So I left the firm after yep. thirteen years, yeah. and we we founded B Star to to really help businesses grow or go. But a, a key element was we're able to develop a, a, an algorithm that uh, works out the value uh, or cap rate specific to a business. Mm, yep, fantastic, and and I know that um, me and Inspire, our team, have been using B Star for years now, and uh, and it just makes light work of um, of those valuation services to uh, clients. Um, I know that there there might be accountants who, and, and this was us at the time. It's like, oh, we, we haven't done heaps of that before. Um, you know, we understand the concepts, but like, how do we get stuck in? And I think um, it's it's a really great tool. There's an initial learning curve, but um, and it's a really great tool to help um, accounting firms to, to I guess, deliver that high-level advice. Um, so uh, would you be able to sort of talk us through the, the key points of how how it works? Yeah, basically um, it, it, it comes up with a cap rate or profit multiple specific mm -hmm. to the business. And what makes it unique, it looks at what we call the non-financial performance indicators. So mm -hmm. apart from the profitability, and cash flow, what other um, performance indicators affect the value of the business? And we're able to come up with a, a tool called a risk and value driver assessment. And once you've done that analysis, it will come up with a risk period, which is how long am I prepared to wait as the owner investor to get my capital back? Mm -hmm. And then it'll cap the value of the business based on its profit after tax cash flow and risk profile. And that's why it's quite unique because it has a very sound methodology around mm. determining the multiple uh, for the business and it'll cap it to the basically the free cash flow, uh, profitability and risk profile. And, it, yeah. it, and that's when I spoke in the introduction and we got that methodology um, based on Porter's five forces model and, the, and we were helping mm. the major banks look at credit risk. So it was built on around a very strong uh, methodology in terms of coming up with the value of a business. And mm. and we launched that in, I think, 2007, and we uh, it was a high interest uh, for a lot of practices because coming up with the future maintainable earnings is relatively mm. straightforward, but 
you know, coming up with the cap rate or profit multiple was quite a subjective um, yeah. component and, and, and they really liked the scientific approach to um, determining the multiple. So that's why we got so many uh, firms using it at the start. Yeah. Okay. And so, what's the alternative then? So, let's say you don't have um, you don't have the algorithm that sits yep. behind to adjust for risk. Do you just like make it up? Oh, yeah, three times or two and a half, and and then sort of hope the buyer or the prospective buyer goes, yeah, okay. Like, what, what's the? Yeah. Well, that's the challenge because yeah. you know there's a rule of thumb of three, but hmm. um, what I always say, even um, to our business broker clients, I say you can't make a generic assumption about the multiple, uh, you've got to take a deep dive because mm. there might be a unique feature in the business mm. that uh, makes this business special. And that's why the risk and value driver assessment or RAVD is so powerful because it looks at 10 different um, areas in the business that mm. can be a good thing uh, and a strong generate a strong multiple. So yeah, the rule of thumb has always been around three, but Using this methodology, you'll come up with a, a multiple, very specific type of business. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And and with the valuations that um, that B Star can provide, um, th- there are some that that you you wouldn't do necessarily that don't use the EBIT times the or the future maintainable earnings by the multiple. Yeah. What are what are some of those that you? Well, want? it's like yeah. a net, first one's a net present value discounted cash flow, maybe for a startup business. Um, yeah. That business doesn't have a history of um, profitability mm-hmm. going concern. So our tool doesn't apply for that type of valuation. And the other one is the asset method valuation uh, methodology where the business has strong uh, physical assets, mm-hmm. uh, land and buildings, property. Um, so our tool won't value those. Um, it mainly focuses on the business and you I can use the tool to value the business or yep. you can use it to value the entity net tangible assets. And that's grown in popularity, particularly mm. um, for uh, succession where you've got to come up with a value of the share or yep. the units in the trust. But even a um, even the the business with like heavy assets, you could still get a like a, an expert valuer for those assets yep. and then add them in for your... Yep. Is that tangible? Yeah, you can. And sometimes the you might start your valuation process going down a future maintainable earnings method, mm. but then you'll find that the the value of those heavy assets exceeds the value of the, the business. <laughs> so will. therefore it reverts back to an asset method. And the good thing about our tool, it, you know, it's fully automated. So it's a it's a it's a streamlined process to get to that stage, which is which is why it's going so well. Yeah, cool. Okay, and then the other methodology I um I've I've seen businesses transacted at is a sense sense in the dollar or like audiology. I've I've yeah. seen it happen mortgage broking, you know, yeah. a multiple of revenue. So you wouldn't use the tool for that necessarily. Yeah, well, the first thing I always say to people when they come to me and say my business is worth a multiple of uh, revenue, I say, what are you selling? Are you selling the business, yeah. or are you selling the client base? Um, and that's what you've got to be a little bit careful of. And yeah, but our tool wouldn't put a um, evaluation multiple uh, on our earnings. We did some um, an scenario analysis and look using industry average profitability and RABDAs for accounting practices, we came up with about 67.5 cents in terms of revenue. Um, so, uh, but you know, if you, maybe you, that methodology applies when you're selling a client group, um, mm. that also happens in the financial services sector. But no, our tool doesn't um, doesn't adopt that approach. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then, then in, in a sense, the the sense in the dollar can actually be quite misleading if you don't look at the yeah makeup. The, yeah, the cost to deliver, the age of the clients. Mm. I got asked a couple of weeks ago to value a client base, and it's really difficult and. And I, 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 we step away from that because there's so many variables. Mm. Uh, our, our tool is mainly adopted when applying a cap rate of profit, mul- profit multiple to the earnings. Yeah. Okay. Great. All righty. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I guess if, if you're an accounting firm owner, like what are the different um, uses, uses that you can use the valuation software for? Like what are the types of things yeah. the, the service might be helpful for? 
Well, I think there's two unique valuations, and we call them, these are our terms, one is a transactional valuation, mm -hmm. where you have a specific need that your client wants their business valued. That could be uh, asset protection, restructuring, a succession event. So there's a specific need, you do the valuation, and uh, you charge a fee for the client. But what we're seeing now is a really strong growth in business advisory valuations. And again, that's our terminology because uh, there's a lot of business owners thinking seriously about succession and they don't know what their business is worth. 88% mm -hmm. uh, have a value gap. So we're seeing a lot of clients come to our accounting practices and say, look, I'm three to five years out from the sale of my business. Uh, can you do a valuation? Tell me what it is. And most of them will have a value gap or shortfall in, in expectations. Mm -hmm. And that leads into the opportunity to build a board of advice service. And we think that's a really strong growth opportunity for accountants. Mm -hmm. And using our tool, you can do a revaluation each year to show uh, clients how you're working with them to uh, close that value gap risk. So, yeah, two types transactional business advisory, but the same process applies. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, and, and so would you be able to sort of walk us maybe through what the, like let's say you've got that business advisory or the, the person who comes to you saying, hey, I'm keen to sell over the next few years. What should I start thinking about? How how would the accountant sort of position it and, 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 and roll out a service delivery on that? Yeah, so first of all, um, you would sit down with the owner, you'd agree the terms and the conditions of the engagement. Mm -hmm. Our tool is a fully automated process. So once you've got your engagement, uh, we recommend you get 100% of your fee up front. You would get the client or clients to complete that risk and value driver assessment. So it's an mm -hmm. online questionnaire. Uh, you've seen it, they go through it and that comes up with a risk score. One of the great things about our tool if you're valuing a multi-owner multi business, you can mm. send a risk and value driver assessment to each owner. Uh, they can uh, complete it individually, and then you amalgamate responses, which I love. That's one of the favorite yeah. functions of our tool. Um, so that first step, sorry. Yeah, it can be quite interesting, actually. We um, we had a client where the, one of the brothers runs it. The other one's sort of in the background a bit. We only sent them the single Ravda and then we they wanted to do it separately. And so we had to sort of send the, the second one out and combine it. So yeah. that was interesting. <laughs> I think it made like 0.1 of a difference on the multiple, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, and, and my, that's a challenge for a lot of bigger businesses, getting everyone aligned. Yeah. But the, coming back to the process, once they complete mm -hmm. a risk and value driver assessment, you then go into the online tool. You can import the data from power accounting systems, and mm. then you've got to do your adjustments to mm. work out the future maintainable earnings. Typical big adjustments we see are the difference between actual owner salary, notional salaries, COVID mm. benefits, et cetera, et cetera. And um, then when you generate the report, you're able to um, select it based on there's different reports. It comes back to uh, the nature of your engagement. And again, that process is fully automated. Am I valuing the business or am I valuing the entity net tangible assets? Mm. But um, one of the things that's become really, really popular now in the valuation process is getting access to industry benchmarking data. Yes. And what our tool enables accounting practices to do, as you work out your key assumptions, mm. you're able to benchmark your profitability your cash flow, your risk and value driver score against industry data. So that really helps in terms of getting accurate valuations. Yep. And, and then um, you and can benchmark your, your valuations once you generate the report. Okay. And so what does that look like in the report itself? So so you, when you say automated, it, it generates the it automatically generates the report based on your inputs. Yep. What, what is that benchmarking? How does that pull through? Yeah, well, it'll it'll when you set up the risk and value driver assessment, you've got to nominate your client's industry and their most recent turnover. Mm -hmm. And behind the scenes, our in our database, because we have over eight thousand valuations, and we get two hundred and fifty new valuations per month across wow. Australia and New Zealand, um, and. So you're then able to say, before I issue the report, 
uh, to my client, how does my profitability, profitability calculation compare to the industry average and benchmark? How does my cap rate compare? And how does my overall value uh, compare to the industry average and the benchmark, which is the top 20%? Mm. So what we're finding is benchmarking data enables you to uh, position yourself as being independent because you're able to compare like for like businesses and and in the small business SME and me sectors in Australia and New Zealand that data is really hard to get and mm. we're lucky enough we're getting a lot of transactions and uh, that's becoming so important in the valuation process. Yeah. Okay. And is that is that other data you're getting from other f- your your firms that work with you submitting valuations and and. Yeah. yeah, and we also have quite a few business brokers who work with us. Yep. And they're saying they they use our tool for what we call appraisals. Mm-hmm. And they're saying the the value is coming within five to ten percent of what the sale price is or the purchase price is. Wow, that's good feedback. Yeah. And also um, we've been able to develop valuation models for specific industries like mm-hmm. doctors, uh, dentists, because they're normally really good clients of accounting firms. Yep. So we're able to match multiples that are selling in the industry. So um, I think when we first launched the tool, a lot of accountants like the scientific approach to the cap rate calculation. Mm. But Mm. in the last three to five years, they really um, value the benchmarking data as they enter and generate their key assumptions, but also the outcomes uh, before they issue the report to clients. Mm, yep, very good. And, and I guess let's say you're sort of working through that um, that advisory piece with a client who's looking to sell in a couple of years. You, you yeah. mentioned to value, let's say, every 12 months. You could do it quicker, sooner than that, yeah, like every three to six, even though yeah. maybe a bit, bit of work. But um, Yeah, so one of the things we do when you, when you get an engagement for that business advisory valuation, once you, you've come up with the estimate of value, you can mm-hmm. do what we call a what-if calculation. Yep. So you can say to your clients, let's sit down now and let's look at ways we can improve your business. So you can go back and look at the risk and value drive assessment. Yes. You can look at their, their cash flow, their debt as whip stock turnover days. And if you can show an improvement in there, it'll, it'll regenerate the valuation so they can see wow. the upside right, yep. of improvement. And that, that's really important to get them engaged because they want to see the value of your advisory services. And um, and then at the end of that anniversary, you want to do a revaluation to quantify the value. And if you yep. do that, you'll keep that retainer relationship open, which is yeah. really important. Really important. Yeah. Cool. So at the outset, you say, well, if we do these, if we adjust these five figures by you know X yep. percent, yep. Um, this will be your outcome. You, you go through the twelve months, have those um, advisory board or sounding yep. board check ins with with the client. Uh, at the end, you sort of prove the value, whether it's as high as you expected or yep. give or take. But um, in a sense, you could you could show the client whether you've paid whether you've paid for yourself in that sense through that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 spot on. And that's mm. that's the you've got to be able to demonstrate value to retain the retainer, yep. and that's why we're saying to accountants. Um, Think about valuations from a transactional point of view, Mm. specific need, but also from this business advisory opportunity. And and that's the big market. And and there's a lot of business owners now looking for that type of advice as they start to think about succession. Yeah, yeah. So there's only a very small percentage of business owners actually going through those transactional things. Uh, The the bulk may actually be chasing the the advisory service. That's... uh, yeah, and, and, yeah. and that's that's changing valuations from what we call a discretionary service to mm-hmm. an essential service. Mm-hmm. And we've seen the tick up in the number of valuations completed per month, um, and COVID had a lot to do with that as well. Yeah, so what are you seeing there? Because we're seeing the volume within our client base of people exiting business uh, mm. go up, and and they you know they're getting cash for their business. They're not sort mm. of shutting it down. What, what what are you seeing from that perspective? A lot of internal succession, okay, uh, where they want to lock in the talent, mm-hmm. their their key staffs. So we we call it minority interest shareholder programs, where they'll go to a key staff and say. Uh, we'll value the business today. We'll give you an option. If you stay with us for the next 12 to 24 months, you can exercise the option. You can buy 5%. So yep. internal succession to lock in the talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of mergers and acquisitions to get economies of scale. 
yes. uh, in the business. And then, unfortunately, uh, disputes, yep. uh, both family and business. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's what we're seeing across our numbers. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And um, and the the other question I've got. So I I know you do valuations for accounting firms themselves, but also you could do you act on behalf of um, the the accounting firm for their clients at all? Rarely, unless oh, yeah. they're a very important client and there's a conflict of interest around independence, uh, and yeah. then we'll get a call and say, "Can you help us out with that specific opportunity?" Mm. Yeah. Okay. Great. But in in terms of like your your expert valuation service, you you offer that for accounting firms themselves. Yeah, we do a lot of um, accounting firm valuations. We do a lot of financial planning valuations as well. Yeah. Um, so we've got a tremendous data. Uh, we have a risk and value driver assessment for those specific industries. Yep. Uh, and you know, and that's a really important value add when we bring on a new firm as what we call our alliance partners, we recommend their first client is their practice <laughs> and uh, we get them to value their client's business, their business, sorry, and and that's part of their training um, to build trust in the process. Yeah, great. Okay. And so w- what does the pathway look like of becoming an alliance partner? Yeah, normally uh, people make contact with us. They've heard of Beast. We've been around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, we've got the trust <laughs> in the accounting sector. And they'll ask for a demonstration, um, mm-hmm. which goes for about 45, 50 minutes. Mm-hmm. And we'll just show them some of the unique features of the tool. And then um, they'll normally sign on and we'll train them. And we'll also um, then uh, give them access to both the valuation tool, uh, the benchmarking data. Plus, we, we help them a lot to promote those services to existing and new clients. So we've got some really cool marketing Mm -hmm. tools Um, we have a valuation survey which is online and we have a new online course which shows business owners how to think about valuation so a lot of support is really important yeah okay so that that ability to sort of implement the product with your client base is is, how you have some resources there yeah well we have to because it's the the accounting industry is known for high failure to implement rates right (laughs) and so um we we've built a lot of support material we have a great on um, training center we have a live chat message you know simple things like making sure that i get the right industry selection yeah because that in fact impacts the benchmarking data yep and that is that um anzic codes yeah yes it is and it goes down three levels and uh, even things like generating a simple industry valuation benchmark report. So maybe you haven't got the engagement with mm. a client yet, but you're able to show a client here are the average benchmark multiples yep. for businesses in the industry. And that gets them thinking. Okay. And, and um, these are all the th- resources that you've got to have if you really want to um, develop an interest in this area because it leads mm. to so much other work, mm. Um, mm. P- particularly business advisory valuations. Yeah, even the transactional stuff that the accountant can get involved in, like due diligence or, you know, the restructure itself with the the entities and and, yeah, all sorts. That's been a um, been a great tool, and I've got to really commend you on the support that you offer. So at Inspire, um, you know, we've got quite a few team members who actually log in and use it for our our clients. Um, and um, yeah, as I said, the support's been phenomenal. Um, you know, it's really okay. quick. We often get you as well um, yeah. to 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 help. Um, and with with your onboarding, is there that that support in a sense where you know your first couple of vowels you can get some perspective on? Yeah, so a couple of things about the onboarding process. One of the things that we've done in the last six months is we've built an online learning centre mm-hmm. where, and it always goes back to accounting firm staff to help them develop skill sets in other areas. Mm-hmm. So from a retention and motivation point of view, uh, there's now videos around the whole valuation process, the business advisory valuation. They could get a certificate of completion. So we're, we've just released that because of, we found there was such a big issue around giving staff structured career pathways to do more advisory work, particularly mm. for valuations. Um, then they can watch videos, but um, 
everyone likes the live chat messaging and <laughs> so do your staff. So yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, we know who we're talking about here. So um, yeah. they're, <laughs> they're, uh, they're having yeah. a particular issue. They can live chat us and unless we're involved in a webinar, we'll respond straight away. So support is really important for us and yep. there's different ways we provide that. Yeah, yep, fantastic. There you go. Um, and, and so for um, accounts um, in, in Australia, what do you see as the biggest opportunities over the next few years? You know, we're coming out of COVID, we talks of um, potential recession. Um, what are the opportunities? Oh, definitely um, the number one would be that three to five year out from sale client. Yep. Um, the second one is getting the bigger businesses uh, thinking about, uh, interesting ideas to retain their staff in terms mm. of those minority interest shareholder programs. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously there's a, opportunities around acquisitions to get economies of scales to grow, right? Mm. Um, and we, we, we have 17 different industry models and particularly um, for the health sector. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing there's a lot of uh, transactions uh, locking in contracting dentists or doctors and giving them opportunities. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of activity around succession, uh, yep. mergers, transitions. And so you mean like locking the doctors in as that minority shareholder? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Otherwise they go and <laughs> you've got to start again and, and that's mm. really difficult. So the minority interest shareholder program mm. is something that everybody sees as a way to retain experienced staff other mm. than just salaries and bonuses. Yep, yep. And so to, to implement that for a client, you need to sort of value the business itself. Yep. Um, and then you need your, your legal partner, whoever that is, to do all the docs for Yeah, um, for, yeah for correct. That. And then for accounting firms, what it does, it gives them mm. an ongoing relationship with their clients because you do the mm. reval each year. Yes. And, and for accounting firms, getting that recurring revenue in their practice, apart mm. from tax compliance, accounting work, uh, affects their valuation. So it pushes it up if they've got a, you know, recurring fee-for-service revenue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, very good. And, and hey, just one of the other things I, I do remember about the, um, I guess, the ROI on uh, valuation services, would you be able to walk us through what you typically see a, a firm charge for an average valuation versus the the time input on it? Yeah. You wouldn't... In, if you're doing, say, a typical transaction valuation, maybe for a restructure, mm. somewhere between three and a half and 10 grand. And yeah. that's the average fee in the market at the moment. And the, the time or cost to deliver that service is, you know, around that 15 to 20% because mm. it's a fully automated process. Um, so you're making high margin uh, hmm. returns because you're using automation to get the outcomes, and that's important. Um, yep. So that's a tra typical transactional value uh, for an SME client, three and a half to ten. Hmm. Um, the the then if you did a business advisory one, it's normally three and a half to five, and then the advisory services on an ongoing basis about fifteen hundred a month, so about eighteen grand a year for, yeah, an, wow. for an SME. And so, what do you see the accountant usually deliver for that fifteen hundred a month? Oh, they do. They do four board of advice meetings a year. Um, yep. They'll go through and look at the profitability, the cash flow. They'll mm. take a look at one section in the Raptor because one of the things about um, retaining and having a relationship on an ongoing basis, you've got to keep the topic of interest and relevance. So mm. they can go through a section in the Raptor. That they'll update the accountability action items to improve the business. Mm. And then they'll do a reveal at mm. the end. Um, and that's how it works. Yeah. And then I guess that from the Ravda, you, you've got your, um, your lowest hanging fruit, pretty obvious yeah. when you do that. So Yeah. So I'll give you an example. I was asked to value a large wealth management business. And, mm. and when I looked at the selling wage cost as a percentage of fee earn, earned, it was really low, which is a good thing from a KPI analysis. Yep. But when the owners went through the risk and value drive assessment and the staff section, one of the owners said, we're not remunerating our staff correctly. Okay. And if we're not looked at that and we just looked at the numbers, we would never have got there. So that, and then they set up a board of advice about three grand a month to fix that one issue. Wow. So sometimes just looking at the numbers 
doesn't tell the full story. Mm. And, and that's why that risk and value driver assessment or RAVDA is so powerful because it looks at, you know, 50 to 80 different value drivers that affect the multiple. Yeah, yep, yeah, right. And and just to check in, so you in the demonstration part, if, mm. if someone's if an, a firm owner is wanting to look at if this is a good solution for them, they can see the RAVDA and test it out. Is that no, we don't do, we have a video because yep. um, there's a bit of IP, so we don't do yeah. demo sites, but we'll send them enough content uh, to see how it all works. And again, we're really yeah. passionate about them taking their practice through mm. as the first client because they'll get the whole practice to learn about it. It builds mm. trust. And plus, it's important for accounting firms to, to do the same thing on their own business. Yep. Yeah, yeah. What, what better case study in a sense yeah, um, yeah. than knowing the business? Yeah. Mm, no, very good. All righty. Well, hey, um, so how do uh, how do accountants get in touch with you? Is the website just go, the yeah, just go to the website, bstar.com.au, and um, we have a, a whole section on the website dedicated to the valuation tool, and then they can just request a demo. Mm. And the demo takes about 45 minutes, and we normally do it via a team meeting. Yeah. And and they and what they're getting, they're not only getting a valuation tool, they're getting really good, accurate benchmarking data for the mm. small business SME and me sectors. And that's that's really hard to find. And so we're really happy about that. Yeah, fantastic. All righty. Well, hey, um, thanks, Grant. I really appreciate the time today. Um, and again, appreciate the impact that PSTAR's had on Inspire and, and what we do. So um, and, and yeah, thanks we, for sharing. Yeah, we love working with you and you're a legend and keep doing what you're doing. Um, Thank you. It's great stuff. Really appreciate that. All righty. We'll chat soon. Cheers.